everyone welcome to india market close and uh, well we've had a bit of a tapering off if you will of the market so we are in the red not by margin really but relative to how we started off and again it was not really a rara rally today so the intraday of the nifty should come up on your screen because while we are in the red or flattish if you will and we've come off from the highs of the day but it's not that it's a dramatic pullback i mean we were at the highs we kind of currently at these levels um it's okay the mid caps and the small caps which were underperforming yesterday and maybe marginally outperforming today they'll come up on your screen next as well um and again a similar performance right we trading at the close to the low point of the day off from the highs both for the mid caps and the small caps so similar trend of sorts but nothing too dramatic is the point i'm trying to make last chart advanced decline before we get the heat map up on the screen the market breadth would have taken a turn for the worse somewhere here midway through trade which is where you've seen the declines come in and currently in the favor of the decliners nothing too dramatic again one is to two in favor of the declines um, get the heat map up on the screen and show you what's moving and what's not a lot of red very little green um autos have taken a back seat today reliance has taken a back seat today so the key performers of yesterday are down so you have a bit of a loss in hero motor corp um there is reliance which is down about 1 and 1/2% uh, there is weakness uh, in stocks like tata consumer titan and asian paints so consumption has shown a bit of a weak hand as well and britannia too is down in the red what has done well some bit of flavor in banks in fact banks are outperforming today and that's the last piece before i hand it over to tamanna that banks are doing well today yesterday they they pulled back in today the bank nifty seems to be doing okay because uh, from an icsa bank which is up to an axis bank which is marginally in the green there's some bit of flavor that banks are showing in the session today so that's actually the good part but uh, lots of mid cap and small cap movers uh, tamanna as is the case daily of course but even on a dull day today there are there are a few buzzing stocks there are definitely a few buzzing stocks and uh, they have been through the morning we should take a look at what's happening uh, to a uh, godrej properties a uh, premier explosives uh, was uh, just completely you know uh, they've announced a stock split so that was doing well through the day we'll pull up a godrej properties as well and see what's happening there and they've held on uh, about 4% up even now i was talking about a premier explosives uh, we we'll look at what the indices are also doing yeah that stock is i think stock of the afternoon in a sense about 15% sent up um uh, let's just uh, quickly uh, look at what uh, the mid cap and small cap indices are doing before we go to dharmesh kant and get a sense of where the broader end of the markets are and uh, not too much enthusiasm it sort of mirrored what we've seen through the day which is uh, that we opened on a very very strong point some sort of uh, you know sustainability and then you've kind of uh, tapered off i would say about of maybe not uh, really harsh profit booking but some profit booking uh, coming in uh, kunal shah with with us this afternoon he is senior technical and derivative analyst at LKP Securities Dharmesh Kant also joining in he's head equity research at Chola Securities very good afternoon to both of you great as always to have you on NDTV profit but uh, kunal let me begin with uh, you know where you see the levels going and where really that pressure is coming in for the nifty uh good afternoon i think uh, what we have seen in the markets uh, a strong up move in both the mid cap as well as these uh, small cap indices Uh, now looking forward on the technical chart, the uptrend is still intact. I expect uh, Nifty to at least uh, touch the mark of twenty-two thousand eight hundred, nine hundred in the near term, and eventually twenty-three thousand on the higher end. Uh, Bank Nifty also looks uh, positive. Uh, Bank Nifty is likely to achieve the figure of fifty thousand also going forward. So for me, my view on both the indices remains positive. Uh, the mid cap and the small cap space might enter into a consolidation phase there will be certain stocks or certain sectors which will start out performing rather than the entire basket of mid cap and small cap out performing so i think at higher levels we will keep on consolidating on mid cap and small caps uh, but the indices will continue to make a new high hmm um uh, kunal let's just get your top picks right uh, up front how would you play this afternoon right now as you see some selling pressure coming in anything that you would pick uh, the stock which i am liking even at the current levels uh, is one from the large caps and uh, that is lnt uh, lnt still looks very strong on the technical charts where higher high high low formations are still intact uh, we are on the verge of a breakout where 3820 uh, about that the breakout will be confirmed i am preempting this breakout to come in so one can initiate long positions at the current levels uh, keeping a stop loss of 3700 on the downside and looking for targets of 4000 to 4100 on the upside 
Hmm. Well, indeed, Kunal, speak this afternoon, uh, Dharmesh. Uh, let me come to you to, uh, you know, where you're seeing really some of those uh, banking names going. Uh, we've seen a good run-up in the last few days, tepid, tepid today, uh, apart from some uh, standouts. Anything that you would bet on at this point? You've had an interesting move in Axis as well today. Um, is that something that you'd be constructive on? Yeah, Dr. Dhaman, I think in the banking space, uh, the business updates are really encouraging. Across the board, uh, we saw uh, advances growth greater than the deposit growth. And for public sector banks, it was in uh, early teens, uh, whereas for private sector players, it was much better. I think industry to bank stands out uh, as far as the business update numbers are concerned, both on advances in the deposit growth fund. It has been doing well in Q3 as well. But after the results were announced, there was some profit taking happening into the space and this time again, they have come out with a stronger update. On, on the day of result update, if nothing goes wrong with the asset quality and on the slippage side, which I doubt uh, there will be only 5 or 10 basis point kind of a slippage, not both in that, then this bank is uh, to be re-rated. So, uh, among the four or five large cap names like ICICI Bank, Access Bank, Kotak, and SDFC, I prefer Indusind uh, on the top of the pecking order. So that is where the investment money can still be poured into at current market levels and the uh, level at the price at which companies study. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> well, that's one bucket to watch out for. Uh, we'll get in a view on real estate stocks in moments from now, but. You know, the, the, the set of stocks which uh, have had a bit of a yo-yo move uh, between yesterday and today, Kunal, are autos, right? Up yesterday, down today, Reliance is the other one. Um, is, there, is there a thought on Reliance, for example? I mean, if we uh, look on Reliance, I think uh, overall the chart structure still remains uh, bullish. Uh, on Reliance, what we have seen is that uh, it has been a leader in this last leg of rally, what we have got. And I think this uh, momentum will continue on the higher end. I'm expecting Reliance to surpass the mark of 3000 again and even go towards the mark of 3100. So even if whatever dip we have got in today's trading session, I'll be a buyer in this dip for Reliance, uh, looking for targets of 3100 and keeping a stop loss of 2860 on the downside. Hmm. Okay. Now that is Reliance, which isn't doing well. The stock of the day today, though, to our mind, is Godrej Properties. Uh, on the back of the kind of Q4 numbers that it put out, Anushi, my colleague Johnson, to tell us all about it. Anushi, why this 4% uptick? Right, Neera. So if you look at Godrej Properties today, it has been buzzing about the whole day. In fact, and seeing an you know, intraday high of about 7.9%. Now, well, this is on the back of the company's operational numbers, which came out uh, regarding the Q4 and both FY24 numbers over here. So if you have to look at the Q4 numbers, they have seen about a 135% growth, uh, recording a booking value of about 9,500 crore for the quarter. But the FY24 has seen about a 84% growth at rupees 22,500 crore, which is way beyond the company's guidance of about 20,000 crore. Now, even if you look back and go ahead at the beginning of the fiscal, the, this is 61% above the company's initial guidance they had given for FY24. Apart from that, this is the highest ever quarterly sales that the company has registered in the Mumbai region, about 4,000 crore of sales over here. But let's just see the key kind of projects that have supported this kind of growth we are seeing. First is the Godred Zenith project in the NCR region with a booking value of about 3,000 crore, which has led to this Q4 number, 135% growth we are seeing. Another, as, another is the Godrej Reserve in the MMR region with a booking value of about 2,690 crore. But apart from that, even if you look, look at the whole FY24 scenario, uh, four projects have recorded about a booking value which is higher than the 2,000 crore mark. Well, this was on the pre-sales aspect, but we also have to focus on the collections and the average realizations going forward for the company. Um, now when the results come out. So those two need to be tracked and again the valuations of the company remain a focal point for the company. But overall the pre-sales number gives a good indicator on the kind of revenue recognition that we will see over the course of next couple of quarters for the company going ahead. So this is why Godrej Properties is buzzing in trade today. Strong move there and Dharmesh, uh, before we take that break, a word on Godrej Properties because good move, real estate by and large hasn't disappointed but for one or two idiosyncratic moves. Uh, what about Godrej in particular? See, the company is a pretty strong set of numbers and it is the case in point is 
And these are more dependent on the kind of launches which happens in a particular quarter. So the quarter where the launches are more, and going to the festive season, this was well you know, structured as well. Uh, you have a very good revenue booking and that translates into the good profitability. Having said that, the entire real estate sector has been doing very well. I was just talking to a few of our dealer checks uh, over the weekend. And even in eastern part of the country where none of the listed players are present, uh, they have been also doing uh, fairly well. So after 7 eight years of a lull period in the real estate market, last two years has been very good. And the, now the prices are also seeing a slight uptake uh, compared to what it was a year ago period. So I think the entire swing is into a good uh, upswing kind of a market we are into and this uh, though maybe the last leg of the stock price upside movement but still that last leg should be around 30 35 percent from the present level this i'm talking about the most of the last cap players into the real estate play on the real estate index i think for this financial year we should end up with a gain of anywhere between 13 to 14 percent so a uh, pretty decent basket to be in even at current levels gorgeous properties has done pretty well and the catch-up is happening on. So I think Gothrez, DLF, Phoenix Mail, and back to tech developers, these are the uh, real estate companies which one should be having in their portfolio if you're going with the real estate theme, and which I think is a good play still from current levels. All right, we'll take a very short break. Uh, that's obviously Dharmesh's take on the real estate uh, play. But after the break, we're going to be talking to the management of transformers and rectifiers. Uh, Nuvama note out uh, today has seen some enthusiastic, uh, enthusiasm in the stock price as well. What's happening with TRIL? All of those updates uh, and a conversation with Jitendra Mantora, chairman of TRIL, after the short break. Stay tuned. Transformers and rectifiers, post-market hours yesterday, posted their numbers, their investor presentation for the outlook ahead. And all of that seemed to be very, very strong. Q4, the revenues have gone up a bit and a bit margin. A bit margin have moved up from 7.2 
to 12.9. PAT margins have moved up from 2.1% in quarter four FY23 to 7.2% in FY24. So very strong showing uh, thus far. The question is what can be expected going ahead. Mr. Jitendra Mamtora, who joined a few days back and explained beautifully about the kind of demand existing, joins us right now to talk about the quarter gone by and the outlook ahead. Mr. Mamtora, firstly, congratulations on a very strong set of numbers. But tell us, sir, is this... Is this a bit of a new normal because of the demand situation that exists or was is the Q4 uptick that we've seen on EBITDA, on the kind of revenue upticks that we've seen, um, uh, a one-off? Uh, if you see, uh, traditionally, you know, uh, when we talk about uh, uh, our four, uh, three IPO numbers, you know, the, the EBIT margins were something somewhere around 17%, 18%, 20%. Not only us, everybody's uh, EBIT margins were like that. But in between, what happened was uh, there were uh, newcomers who entered into the business, uh, especially into the large power transformers. Everybody wanted to have the entry into it. And, you know, there was uh, a unnecessary competition, which was not required. So which had dropped the prices also. Everybody wanted to capture the market. It was new for everyone. But now it is matured and everybody knows that there is enough market for everyone. And it's not only renewable, you know, it is only about the railways, it's about the metros, it is about the electric vehicles and so on, you know. So the demand for the electricity is going to go to an extent that you can't imagine, you know, that whether we'll be able to cope up with the requirement. It's going to be huge, huge. And uh, nobody will be without the orders. Everybody will be doing very well, and uh, nobody will have any uh, complaint uh, for the lower prices of the transformers. And now you know you can see that uh, the transformer manufacturers are also given due respect, which was missing earlier. They were uh, talking about it as a, a commodity business. The margins were one percent, two percent, something like that. People were working with. Uh, the MSR ratio of uh, 85% up to, and people have gone up to even 89, 90%. Now it has come down to uh, 77, 78, 75. And going forward, you know, yeah. it is going to be 70. So looking at all this, um, cash flow situation improving, uh, not only the EBIT margin, but also the bottom line will also go up uh, substantially in the coming years. Mr. Mamto? Yeah, sorry. No, no, Mr. Mabdur, I heard you. I'm just trying to get this sense. And sorry, I'm starting off with the margin conversation. We'll move on to sales and pricing in a bit. But just this, did I hear you say that during the good times, margins have been as high as 19, 20%. And therefore, am I to conclude that while you've moved up to 13%, this may not be the end of the uptick in the margin curve, that you could probably head towards those numbers, high teens, in the quarters to come? We all hope so. We all hope so. And you, if you see, uh, some of uh, the smaller transformer manufacturers have that kind of a margin uh, as such. You know, I don't want to name them, but they have uh, a bit margin of 25% even uh, in uh, the, uh, the market, which is quite competitive. There also, you know, there are lack of good suppliers. Now people are looking at not only the pricing, they are looking also at the quality of the transformer, the reliability of the transformer. Because uh, a outage for a day causes uh, them a fortune, you know. It may be the cost of the transformer, more than the cost of the transformer. So people are now not talking only about the price, they also talk about the, uh, the reliability of the transformers. Uh, whether it is for uh, power evacuation, whether it is for IDT, that is uh, inverted duty transformers for the solar panels, or whether it is going to be, which, which has not come as yet, but uh, the transformers for the green hydrogen. So it's going to be a huge market, uh, which, you know, everybody will enjoy that. And we hope uh, to strengthen our position by uh, doing some backward integration, which is our uh, uh, sole uh, 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 thinking that we should uh, focus on uh, the backward integration, because that is going to be the next shortage. Transformer shortage now, when the transformer demand has gone up, uh, the uh, 
the other backward integration like tank fabrication, the bushings, um, and all those things, you know, are in short supply. Even the insulating material is in short supply. There are no supplies now. Uh, we have to wait for the supply or we have to plan in advance, pay them higher. So we all uh, these areas, we are focusing on all these areas and we should be able to become self-sufficient in the year to come. All right, Mr. Mamtura, very good afternoon. This is Tamanna here. And, uh, you know, some very, I think, optimistic and positive statements there from you as far as uh, the sustenance of those uh, EBITDA margins are concerned. That's what's led to your PAT also looking very robust. Your profit after tax is up 400% year on year. Where do you think pricing is going to go? In your first response to us, you talked about how that whole era of um, competition and cutthroat pricing is maybe behind us. How do you see pricing pan out? See, uh, one thing, uh, wherever there is, uh, if margins are higher than uh, what, what is due, then you will find a lot of uh, the other newcomers entering into the market. But as long as the pricing remains reasonable, uh, there won't be many uh, uh, inroads by the newcomers. And moreover, you know, the areas where we are working, uh, the entry levels are very stringent. Like, you know, if you, go, if you want to get into uh, extra high voltage transformers, uh, the entry barriers are there, huge entry barriers are there. You have to, even if you are, you put up a plant, you have to supply one uh, and wait for five years uh, before it completes its uh, uh, guarantee period, and then only you become qualified for that. So it's a long cycle. Uh, even if I'm putting up a new plant now for manufacturing extra high voltage transformer, I will also have to wait, maybe not five years, but at least for two years before I prove myself that in this particular plant, we are in a position to. Uh, manufacture the same uh, quality of transformers which we are making in the other plant. So the entry barriers and then moreover, you know, uh, like uh, we talked about uh, the transformers for the green hydrogen, which is a state of the art, you know, it is not an ordinary transformer, it is something which is totally different. And uh, except for China, you know, people are uh, not very uh, conversant with this particular product. Uh, China, there are a number of parties, you know, a number of companies who are into this. But as far as India is concerned, we are the only one who are qualified supplier for uh, rectifier transformer. We call it a rectifier transformer, which supplies power to uh, the rectifiers. Rectifier supplies power to the uh, electrolyzers, which generates the hydrogen, green hydrogen, and green nitrogen. Uh, uh, green hydrogen and green ammonia. So there, uh, you know, there are no players now as such. Uh, I don't say that players will not come, the players will definitely come. Uh, uh, Hitachi has the technology, but they are restricting it to the European market and the Japanese market. They are not bringing it, the technology here. So that, that, that's uh, where uh, the margins are going to be. Uh, we, we have a very good product mix. If you see, look at our product. Uh, we are probably today, probably I'm saying, uh, eight to ten people outside uh, China who are who are having uh, the entire product range what we have. Mm. Eight to ten, not more than that. You can count them, and uh, more than half of them are uh, in Europe. Six of them are in Europe. Rest four, uh, three to four are elsewhere in the world. Okay. So you know this is uh, the the kind of. Uh, uh, product mix which we have, which will give us an advantage over uh, the sure. other players. Sure, of yeah. course. So, so yes, you know, course. and also, Mr. Mamtora, I know you, you've spoken a bit about the renewable play and how, you know, you have uh, an advantage there. Uh, you are up ahead. Can you explain to us how big a piece of your pie you expect the renewable play to be? See, as on today, uh, almost like 40% of our market is with the renewable. 40%. And how much do you expect it to grow? Um, I, I think, you know, it is uh, the limit as far as I, I can understand. Maybe 40 to 45 percent, not more than that. Rest of the thing which we have to collect from uh, the green hydrogen, uh, rectifier transformers, uh, furnaces, uh, transformers for the electric melt arc uh, 
furnaces, which melts uh, the primary metal. So these are the areas where we are focusing now, and we are being recognized now throughout the world. We have several orders from Mexico. We have already executed several orders from Mexico. Several orders we are executing for America and uh, for Russia as well. About six to seven transformers for Russia. They are all large transformers, uh -huh. and the people have started uh, uh, getting confidence into us uh, with our, uh, you know, nice. our performance of the transformers which we are surprised. Right. Nice. Nice. That's good to know, sir. So then I have one yeah. final question, Mr. Mamtora. Uh, yeah. If all of these things are turning out well, if margins are going to do well, is there a formal guidance that you laid out in the investor presentation? I may have missed it. What is it that you believe you'll do in FI25? And how long is this up cycle? Sorry, that's my second question. Yeah, I, don't, I, I don't want to give you any... Okay. Uh, no, no. Don't give yeah. me a formal guidance, sir. But could but, the, you know, could the revenue out. growth be 20-25%? Hey, it can be anything. I'm telling you, it can be anything. Sir, it can be 5% also. Anything. I will yeah, flash that Mr. Say, Mamtara say, is saying that the, the yeah, guidance will be 100%. Uh, <laughs> uh, our our uh, aim is uh, to go for backward integration. Yes. Where, you know, the margins, uh, every margins may be 25, 30%, 35%. Okay. Uh, overall cost of those uh, components in the transformer may be only 5%. But it will give me an advantage of one and a half percent, two percent, you know, overall. Okay. So these are the Got areas it. where we are no, focusing but, but, on. No, sir. Sorry, sir. I'm just asking you. Sorry, because we in a lack of time. Just need to wrap this up. But just one question. So, which explains the margin uptake? Maybe it can go even beyond twenty percent, which is fine. What about what about demand, sir? Do you reckon that revenue growth could be twenty twenty five percent? Revenue growth has to be that. Has to be. Has that. to be that. Okay. Be. Great. Okay. Mr. Mamtura, fascinating show. Congratulations. Thanks for speaking to us and giving us those details. Much appreciate your time. Thank you. Very much. You, you know, fascinating to, you, you is the word. You managed to drag that out of uh, Mr. Mamdora <laughs> finally, that uh, revenue growth. But, you know, look at the sort of uh, optimism and clarity on how they are going to be head and shoulders above competition, at least domestically. Yeah. And I think that's what you're seeing. If you pull up what has been happening with that stock uh, one month, uh, uh, you know, one year, it's uh, really astonishing. It's uh, really nice. Yeah. Quick take from uh, Kunal Chai and Dharmesh Khan since we're talking about TRIL. Kunal, uh, on the charts, what do you see happening here? Yeah, I think if you look at the long term charts, I think uh, the breakout over had come in much earlier around that 100 to 100 levels. And post that, uh, the stock has rallied uh, steeply. And now, again, the fresh breakout after this recent correction, what we had in mid cap and small cap. Uh, the recent uh, breakout which happened around 380 400 marks and post that the stock has been zooming so still there is my upside left i think the stock can go towards the levels of 520 515 on the upside uh, looking at a base on the downside at around 440 460 so as long as 450 is not taken out decisively i expect this rally to continue towards 515 to 520 so and uh, dharmesh uh, your view on tril uh, fundamentally yeah, Dhamma, I mean, last week only we had a look at it and the type of stock price run up which we have seen in the last one year, at least starting in scope for, you know, valuation kind of a re-rating or the price multiple to be played out. But still, I think 20-25% upside can still be there on the stock price, given the fact that I just had promoter, you know, reiterating time and again. That margins are going to go up from the brand level of 13 14 percent to around 20 25 percent. My only doubt is with the commodity upcycle in place right now, uh, this 20 percent kind of an up upside margin just on the basis of operating leverage or capacity utilization playing out uh, will be a tough task. So let's see, but yeah, the momentum is up until that time when commodity prices do have a you know, time lag of around one quarter or so. So next quarter also the numbers would be great. Post that, we have to see how this upcycle of commodity prices uh, are getting discounted into the operating margin play of these companies. Yeah, I'm just, just trying to think before we slip into that break, Tamanna. Uh, March 2024, they have done a path of 47 crores. It's trading at a market cap of 7,000 crores. That's an unreally high price to earnings multiple. Uh, so at 50, 750, so that's about 150 times. Current year earnings, yes. Let's assume it grows 100%. It's still trading at 75 time earnings. 
So it's not trading cheap. That's the limited point. Is it because point. there are not too many uh, alternatives? In Maybe that, that too. That's also a factor, right? If you yeah. want to get in on on this, where, how many options do you have? <coughs> so clearly, somebody knows something, which is why they've bought into it for so long mm. and consistently buying, and it's trading at these highs. But 150 p is yeah. is is caution. Yeah, hmm. that that filter though then uh, raises questions on a lot of stocks right now. Yeah. To be honest, that valuation yeah. filter is just a whole different story, which we will talk about. But after a very short break, on the other side, we're also telling you what's happening on the F and O side of things. Stay tuned. Back with the India market close right here on NDTV Profit. Uh, we just heard the management of transformers and rectifiers. I just want to lay out some numbers before I go to Agam. Uh, so while um, I mentioned that, uh, and it is true that it is very expensive currently, but based on some brokerage notes that have come out, uh, and I think there was a Nuama note which probably said that, but it's trading at 25 times FY27. So if you believe three years out, then it's not that expensive. Uh, if that is any comfort. Okay, let's take a quick check at the FNO queues for the day. Agam Johnson for that. Agam, how's the day shaped up? Well, it's shaped up well considering we made new highs, but uh, we've, we've started to see a little bit of uh, profit taking as well at the moment. So market's getting just a tad bit jittery. And of course, at the moment, we're seeing the Nifty marginally in the red, but there is a lot of increase in open interest. In fact, OI has increased by 11% in the Nifty futures of April and the Bank Nifty futures again, which had, of course, before seen this trend of uh, a decline, is now starting to see some addition in open Open interest towards what looks like longs and the bank nifty holding on to 48,700 at the moment. Uh, coming down to the options market, uh, we're keeping an eye on, uh, well, 40, well, 22,700 thereabout because that's where the nifty is, but it does seem like uh, we have started to see a little bit more writing in, of straddles around 22,800 because that's where the futures are uh, slightly above the mark of 22,700. Moving on, in terms of your overall open interest distribution picture, this doesn't really change a lot. Uh, in the morning, we were talking about 22,500, the market by, uh, well, puts having the most amount of open interest and on the higher end 23,000 with the calls uh, where did have significant open interest and that 500 point range based on max OI has not changed. Uh, well, in terms of uh, the fin nifty expiry as 
on unexpected lines. We were talking about the expiry to be somewhere between 21,600 and 21,700. And it does seem like that's where we are going to see uh, that close as well as far as the index is concerned. We haven't seen too much of a volatility either as far as the index goes. And of course, finally, in terms of stocks, looking at Exide continuing to make an up move. Hindustan Copper is something that we also address through the course of the day. That's looking at an up move there. And Canfin Homes looking at longs. And in terms of stocks which are seeing unwinding, let's pull that up. We have short covering for Dixon Tech persistent systems as well as IPCA lab looking at short covering. Overall, it's still not a terrible market because at least in the futures and option space, we have more advances as compared to declines. And of course, uh, the benchmarks continue to trend higher, even though the Nifty is currently marginally in the red. Overall, it still could be termed as a positive day of trade. Ah, thanks a lot for that. And positive, you know, uh, Agam brought out some very interesting points. Kunal, I just want to bring you in on one of the pointers that he mentioned, and which is what we are seeing with select IT names today. Persistent seeing some bit of short covering. Infosys on that BOFA upgrade is up in trade, was up about 2% at a point of time before cooling off a little bit. So some of these IT names ahead of the TCS numbers just starting to inch up a little bit, some short covering there. You look at both technicals and derivatives. Uh, how do you how do you gauge what's happening in IT and any specific stock that may stand out for you? Yeah, I think overall, if I look at the Nifty IT chart, uh, I think the IT chart had already given a breakdown earlier when it broke the level of 36,500. Uh, now, since we are heading towards the result season, we might expect some pullback coming in uh, from the current levels. Uh, but overall, the structure still remains weak. Uh, I expect this pullback uh, again to be a good opportunity to look for uh, sell positions. So from the short term perspective, yes, one can trade a bullish bet from the current levels uh, on IT space just for a minor pullback. But the larger term picture still remains uh, extremely bearish for me. So on the IT front, uh, one stock which I would like to highlight here from the FNO space, uh, which looks interesting, is HCL Tech. Now, HCL Tech, if you look on the technical chart, it has taken a support at its 100 DMA. And from there, we have seen multiple bounces uh, in the last 10 to 12 trading sessions. So I think it is forming a base at those levels. We can expect a pullback at least toward the levels of 1600 mark. Now, 1600 is a point where even on the open interest front, there has been the highest open interest built up. So it's clearly a resistance on the technical as well as on the derivative data as well. So you can expect some pullback towards 1600, uh, keeping a stop loss of 1520 on the downside. Darmesh, uh, um, you know, what's your take on the um, IT sort of movement? Fundamentally, the fact that the US economy is now undoubtedly uh, on a hot streak is seeming to boost the idea that uh, IT companies are not necessarily going to have as bad a time. The other factor, of course, everyone's looking at is uh, the kind of numbers that Nokri has put out, and InfoEdge saw that reaction as well. IT hiring is back. Would you say fundamentally there is enough of a case to look at IT in a constructive fashion once again? I think right now our tactical play is on, and it's a natural tactical play ahead of TCS earnings because if TCS does well and you are long on the IT basket, you will continue to make money, even if it doesn't do well. So there has always been a divergence in IT companies reporting their numbers. So till the other numbers come out, there's a hope trade playing out. However, if in the US, if you look at it, it's the companies who are AI platform driven or the product driven companies, they have been doing well and not the general companies like a Salesforce and all. So that's the, the theme which has to be seen very closely and watched out for the IT companies here in India. Accenture came out with the numbers that was not at all encouraging. IT hiring has been there, but the what kind of a segmental hiring has been there in the IT, uh, that is more noteworthy. And I think they are more to do with the AIE professional. So initially it is going to add to the cost of these companies before the actual product integration and value addition gets rolled out and translates into profitability. What I am looking forward to in this IT earnings update is that there should not be any further downward revision of their you know, revenue growth guidance. So if that is there and EBIT margins are maintained, I think with the recent correction, last two months correction with this IT companies are seen, there's definitely a case for at least uh, stable to uh, incrementally uh, those lower upside from there. So a long case builds up, but post you know earnings update, I don't mind to lose five seven percent on the table uh, to be a long term uh, buyer into IT stocks, uh, but first the earnings has to be looked closely. 
Okay, so that's on IT. The other piece is pharmaceuticals and what some of the pharma names have done um, to, over the last few days. But one name in particular is Gland Pharma, wherein the shareholders have sold stake in the company via block trade, and the stock is down. Um, uh, some of the key figures, uh, Smithy, um, what, what stands out in this block trade? Well, uh, there, there was a block trade in the morning of about 5.3% stake uh, change hands in the, this bunch trade. But out of that, 4.9% was sold by two shareholders of the company, that's Nicomac Machinery and RP Advisory. Now, the base size of the, for the issue was 72 lakh shares. Uh, this represents 4.4% and uh, with an upsize option of 8 lakh, uh, 8 lakh shares, that's about half a percent. The floor price for this deal was 1,725 apiece. This represents about a 7% discount to yesterday's close. Now, the interesting thing is that uh, the two shareholders, essentially the two sellers, are associated with the former promoter and uh, the MD and CEO, which is uh, Ravindranath Penmetsa. Now, he's a director in both of these two companies, and they're essentially exiting uh, Gland Pharma through the stake sale. If you look at the stake in December of 2023, Nicomac held about 1.19%, while uh, RP advisory held a 3.74% stake. So essentially through this block they have exited Gland Pharma. Right, thank you for that Smriti. So Gland Pharma uh, down there but because of the stake sale more than anything else. Let's see what's happening with an Axis that also had stake sale uh, news but uh, you saw the stock at least open pretty well and come off its um, day's highs but not in the negative zone yet. Um, one section which is definitely doing well are your metals, Hindustan Zinc, Hindustan Copper and that entire pack uh, having a good day, at least those two counters definitely uh, with a good upside in zinc up nearly 14% right now. Yeah, there you go. I just want to get Kunal's take on uh, some of these names and especially Hindustan Zinc. How would you play this right now, Kunal? I think if I firstly talk on the entire metal space, I think the metal sector ha has uh, witnessed a strong breakout a few days back. And post that breakout, we have seen a continuous uptick with high, high, high low formations. So if you look at the metal index, uh, uh, which is currently trading at around 1,800 and, uh, 800 zone, I expect this level to go to a 9,300, 9,500 mark, which is almost equal to 5 to 6 percent even from the current levels. So if as a metal index can move up by 5 to 6 percent, you will see at least stock moving up uh, by at least 10 percent in the very short term. So we continue to remain bullish on the metal space. Uh, Hindustan Singh, if we talk about uh, the stock has already witnessed since the last two weeks, if you look at the chart, it has been a non-stop run from 294 to 392. So almost 100 point kind of a move what we have got. So definitely not at this point to initiate fresh long. Already holding from the lower levels, continue to hold it. On a longer term chart perspective, it's a fresh breakout what we have got. Uh, the stock can go towards the mark of 430, 440 on the short term. Uh, anybody who want to take a fresh entry into the stock, uh, wait for some declines, uh, which you will get around the mark of 364, 365. So if stock comes around these levels, one can enter again for a fresh trade. 430, up to 430 on Hindustan Zinc is what Kunal is saying. Um, uh, Dharmesh, uh, just a quick view on the whole uh, metals buzz and how sustainable do you think it is? Yeah, right now it's locking. I mean, all the metal spaces are doing well. And after a long while, you've seen a decent rally in the metals in the international market. Primarily led by some manufacturing activity pickup in China. And gold and silver anyways have been on the upside move for quite some time. So Hindustan gets the advantage of silver being the only listed play in the silver space uh, where you can play it out through that. And Hindustan copper, because copper prices have risen up very sharply and going by the infra spends, uh, which uh, both domestic and international uh, community is seeing, I think copper prices are headed up again. So these plays are here to stay. And uh, as we earlier discussed that even US economy is doing fairly well. So consumption basket is doing well, be it US, China or India. So I do think uh, there should be a pretty much upside, but again, metal is for brave arts. A lot of volatility is always there in this segment. Uh, that's both on the metal price as well as the companies which, you know, do the metal business. So uh, one has to be mindful of that fact. Hindalco, NMDC, Coal India, uh, JSW Steel, Hindustan Copper, Hindustan Zinc all looks very attractive to me from a one-year perspective. So 20-25% kind of upside should be there. Having said that, be prepared for volatility in the stock prices as well. Mm. 
All right. So that's what's happening with uh, the metal story. But uh, another story which at least yesterday saw a lot of buzz. We'll see what's happening with the Voltas. Voltas cooled off uh, today. So have counters like Blue Star. But, uh, you know, your overall trend of a very hot summer, severe conditions and what that's going to do for certain stocks continues. Uh, and we caught up with the Blue Star management. My colleague Sesha, in fact, uh, spoke with managing director of Blue Star, BTR Grajan, who says the company could see growth of 25% this summer. As far as Blue Star is concerned, all regions did well. So the, the, the context uh, is uh, the summer sets in in Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, like that. But there the rain also happens in June first week. In northern region, it, it, uh, the sale happens even in July. Uh, so that has been the annual trend. But having said that, all regions have done equally well as far as Blue Star is concerned. The northern region um, is expected to do well this year compared with last year because last year there were, it was not growing compared with 2022 summer. So the anticipation is that we will, we will grow by around 25%. That is the target. Okay. So uh, how was the February and March sales in terms of numbers? If you can throw some light, I understand you are in silent period, but still if you can just give us some so we, insight. Uh, they, we see, we had stated that the industry should end with around 1 million numbers, sorry, 10 million numbers, and we should be doing around 1 million. That, that uh, we have been saying for the past six months. I think the industry would have moved to 11, we should have also moved to 1.1. That, that, that's where it is. So as far as the volume share of around 10% and the value share of close to 14, 13.75 5 to 14, those we are maintaining. Okay. So with the summers also coinciding with the elections, do you see any kind of impact on sales? Because in the previous years, we did see some kind of impact, but this time also, are you seeing a similar trend or is it different? The, the uh, feedback from the market ground level, it is not. The reason may be in 2014 or 19, the cash movements, because from the tire 345, they carry cash to go and buy. And there used to be restrictions like that. And the second is there was there, there used to be uh, you know uh, the the penetration levels were uh, poor and it was still not taking off. Today everybody wants to buy and digital payments uh, uh, ha that penetration have improved. So therefore we are not seeing any slowdown due to elections. On the other hand, there is a huge excitement. But I will tell you most importantly. The ice cream industry seemed to be doing well, which is benefiting us in the form of deep freezer sales. Okay. That, that is growing at around 30%. So, so think of all the ways uh, the hot summer is going to help. And uh, as ice cream consumption goes, storage for it will also have to increase. So that was some input from Mr. Tiag Rajan. Uh, let me just quickly get a take from Dharmesh and uh, Kunal on this theme and how sustainable that, uh, you know, do you see it moving uh, on? Dharmesh, I'll come to you first for the fundamental view on which of these stocks do you see being impacted meaningfully? I mean, the stock you discussed, Blue Star, anyways, has been doing pretty well on the stock by side and uh, the, uh, the numbers are there. Boltas came out with a very good set of numbers after two years of a very lull period out there. So these stocks, AC manufacturers, cooler manufacturers like Symphony and all are definitely going to do well. Ice cream like Vardilal and all uh, should be doing well. But the fact remains that most of the upside has already been priced in. I, I think only now uh, the last leg of sale, 5 to 10 percent kind of uh, more upside. So after that, there would be one year of a lull season or you may get stuck at higher level. So uh, my advice would be if you have bought Voltas at around 900,000 uh, kind of a levels, it's time to book out. A blue Star as well, because these companies will see a hit of uh, commodity inflation playing it out next year, not this year. Uh, and the, most of the benefits of this year has already played out. So nothing, not much juice left out there on the upside now. Hmm. Okay. Well, um, in, 
so cooling solutions or you know today hsbc is upgraded some of the polycab and uh, stocks of that kind as well kunal just very quickly a word on these and if there is a btst or an stbt strategy that you have then couple that up with that as well so i think uh, firstly if we talk about uh, the entire space of uh, air conditioner i think uh, stocks the technical chart looks very good uh, specifically i would like to talk about blue star here i think blue star if you look on a longer time frame uh, the stock has been trading with a strong volume based buying from the lower levels and you have seen high top high bottom formations forming continuously on the monthly chart uh, yes the stock has already rallied quite a lot Uh, so already, if somebody is holding from the lower levels, continue to hold it. I expect to go towards fifteen fifty in the short term. Uh, for fresh entry, uh, look for a dip towards thirteen fifty. Currently trading around fourteen hundred. So uh, if you get a fifty point dip into the stock, uh, utilize that dip to buy. Again, looking for targets of fifteen uh, fifty on the upside. On the lower end, the base is uh, for the stock is formed at thirteen hundred. So thirteen hundred is a good support, a good risk to reward ratio. Where on a fifty point stop loss, you can work for a targets of almost one fifty on the upside. uh coming for a btst idea i think uh, we have seen uh, the gas space uh, has been doing very well uh, recently uh, one stock which i would like to highlight over here for btst would be petronet uh petronet if you look at the technical charts uh, it is on the verge of a long consolidation breakout and uh, the breakout level is around 290 to 91 currently trading at 289 so this breakout would eventually come in tomorrow uh, so a good bet to take right now uh, 289 is the price so one can initiate long positions at the current levels uh, keeping a stop loss on the downside at 284 uh, looking for first target of 296 and second target of 302 okay So well, Petronet LNG and it's perking up in trade. I, I just want to pull up Gale as well, by the way, because Gale was the other one which had perked up, and wonder if Gale has some upsides today. One point three, but Petronet certainly has had a good move in the session today. So do keep an eye out for um, uh, some of these oil and gas related names. Uh, just want to pull up uh, before we get in here in some more voices. Just want to see uh, what some of the key volume buzzers might be doing. um in the session today so stocks which have had a spurt in volumes and also seen some price action obviously hy- hygiene is one but uh, motilal oswal is up 12% now on volumes which are 15 times the one week average there is strength in hindustan zinc something that tamanna was speaking about so that has done very well for itself too and um, Starlight Tech. Starlight Tech. Starlight Tech on its QIP is, uh, news has also had uh, quite a day. Yeah, but I, and and then there is NRB Bearings, which is up seven percent on volumes, which are about five times the one week average. So a lot of stocks which are flying around on very very high volumes in the session today. Um, Darmesh, very quickly, Motila Rosal Financial Services. After a long time, a very solid move here. Do you like the stock? Since I like the business, uh, Motilal Oswal is being a competitor in the same segment, so I would refrain from commenting on this uh, uh, particular company. Uh, but yeah, so the entire business is rocking. It's going to grow at least three to five x in next five to ten years. So yeah. no doubt, it's there. Yeah, okay. no, yeah. Um, but on the space, uh, Dharmesh, if you wanted to comment, and I understand, but uh, the entire capital market related space has been doing very well overall, isn't it? Yes, yes, definitely, and lot of scope. I mean, the type of queries which we are getting, the type of new clients which we are getting, definitely speaks about at least the financial literacy part has picked up very well in India, and it's likely to grow at a much, much faster rate. By the way, LKP Finance and LKP Securities is also listed, so we'll not ask <laughs> Kunal about these stocks either. But just saying that that whole bucket of stocks have done really well. Um, no, J M M is down today. Well, that's a separate kettle of fish. But by the way, just incidentally, I F L Finance two or three days on a trot has had a really good move. So keep an eye out for that as well. Um, on that note, uh, both of you, thank you so much for taking the time out and being with us. Really, really appreciate your time this afternoon. That's uh, Kulal and Dharmesh with their thoughts. Uh, but before we wrap up the show, um, speaking of more voices, here out Saurabh Mukherjee. is founder and ceo of marcellus investment managers uh, who believes that elections may not be the trigger for a large cap rally he also adds that rural consumption is banking upon a good monsoon listen in the combination of very reasonable valuations and large caps a strong corporate balance sheets 
strong banking system balance sheets and the signs of the early signs of a private sector capex cycle i think those are the core drivers of the rally i'm not sure sure elections are front and center in driving the the large cap rally i think it's relatively clear that if there is a if there is a, 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 a showing in the elections where we'll say results in more than 350 seats for the ruling party uh, we will see very strong fii flows even i think anywhere north of 300 i think we'll see uh, a healthy fii flows so 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 that piece i think relatively clear again i hark back to uh, very reasonable valuations on large cap stocks i don't think we have seen indian large caps at this juncture of an economic rally uh, sorry, Indian large caps at this juncture of an economic recovery as reasonably priced as we are seeing today. So this combination is, I think, beautiful for, for foreign investors. And hence, I would suspect that through June, July, August, we should see bumper FII. Starting on rural consumption, there's two layers to the story. I think the first is the current bout of optimism running around that, hey, um, look, the monsoons are likely to be good. It's going to be a good Ravi crop. And hence, let's load up on, on rural India plays. Um, and REGA claimants have reduced. Um, auto sales in rural India picking up. And hence, in anticipation of a good monsoon, let's load up on rural India. This is a kind of typical annual cycle. I've seen this in India for a long time. Somewhere at the beginning of the summer, it's kind of habitual for people to start talking about the monsoon. I'm not so sure how much money uh, investors like Marcellus can make from that. What I think is more interesting to dwell on is um, I think post elections, I think the July budget especially, I think there's going to be lots of announcements focused on reviving rural India. Rural India revival. Well, it'll be interesting to see if that happens or not. So it's three minutes or two minutes left for the markets to shut shop. And let's start wrapping up uh, and show you the key highlights of the day's trade. And she just managed to show some bit of it when we started off trade. But let's get the weightages up now on the Nifty 50 and let's see what some of these uh, point contribution is from the Nifty 50 players in the session today. ICICI Bank is ruling the roost and it explains why the Bank Nifty has some upsides there. So while the Nifty is down about 20 odd points, uh, courtesy ICICI Bank putting in some help, I think we've done well in the session today. Uh, Infosys on that BOFA upgrade has done well and it's up contributing to about 16 odd points and the top gainer Apollo Hospitals, it's a low weightage and therefore this, but what Hindalgo is doing is symptomatic of what's happening with the metal space at large because today we've seen some of the metal stocks doing really well for themselves. Yesterday's best performer is today's worst contributor which is Reliance Industries, down 31 points, up yesterday, down in the session today. Some bit of a pullback for Titan, ITC and some of the consumption names, even Asian Paints was in the red. So not the best of outcomes uh, for, for, for this as well. And watch out for some of the oil and gas names in particular as the mana comes in. Uh, but the likes of Gale, Petro and LNG, two days on a trot now had a good move and could be interesting ones to monitor. But Tamanna, uh, broader end of the spectrum, what's standing out? as well. Uh, Neeraj, I thought that not too much of activity towards the end. If you just pull up what the indices did and your, your mid-cap 100 is ending down in the red, uh, let's pull up the small cap as well and just absolutely flat. But I would say if you had to pick buckets of movement, uh, definitely your metals, Hindustan uh, copper, Hindustan zinc. See, let's take a look at where that is also looking like it's ended. Those were some of the stars of the day. You had a Sterlite Technologies uh, performing very well. And then your whole clutch of, I would say, uh, equity market related stocks, uh, which Not have been doing well. You know, you know Anandrathi and the likes and Nuvama. Uh, Nuvama uh, also, I think, because of an upgrade over there or, or positive brokerage note, has done relatively well. So these were some of the stocks of so Motilal Oswal is what we talked about as well and that stock looks like it's going to end up uh, with a quite a good day. I would say that is one space. Kodrich property uh, was uh, another story of the day kind of a movement that we saw though it's come off uh, its uh, key uh, levels. Uh, Dixon Tech was an interesting play today and I'd uh, be curious to see where that has finally ended. Uh, it's given up most of its gains but it had a fundamentally good story to tell. Autos have uh, persisted for yet another day, uh, mostly, uh, Neeraj, and I thought that was that was good. We'll pull up the components, though. Of course, the index is uh, looking down, and yesterday what pushed it up was also Exide. Uh, so remember that, Exide, once again, not doing too badly, but an iShare, M&M, uh, all of them didn't have too bad a day. It was Bosch 
here, which played spoil sport as far as autos are concerned. Uh, I would say all in all, not a bad day in the lack of any large cues. IT continues to remain in focus, perhaps more as a tactical play, as Dharmesh was also saying. Yeah, and, and, and interesting to see if TCS commentary changes that. But hmm. uh, until then, difficult to really call it. But Bofa did upgrade uh, Infosys, so... Um, Interesting timing, must say. Yeah, but, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but on that note, it's a wrap uh, on this leg of India market close. But, you know, uh, we're talking about autos, consumer durables tomorrow on India Market Open. We have a very interesting conversation yep. with people who sell air conditioners to just tell you how strong that zing is. So that and other things that you should tune for. But for people from the team that has put this show together, thanks so much for watching. चलो Marginal pullbacks is what you would classify the day as today because both on the large cap and the mid cap end of the spectrum, but for maybe banks, I think the markets have seen a pullback come in. The Nifty Bank was in the green, but mid caps and small caps too ended the day in the red. So not the best of outcomes in the session, you have to agree. Now bring up the heat map. Uh, okay, small caps in it flattish, but for better part of the day, they were in the red. Get the heat map up on the screen. A fair degree of red, very little green. And Apollo Hospitals was up 3%. Hindalco and some of the metal names did okay. And ICICI Bank was the big contributor along with Infosys. And there was some strength for stocks like Bajaj Finserv and Grassim and Tata Steel. So metals by and large, like I said, did okay. What didn't do